Hello there everyone, you've tuned in UXW Bill. In this video, I am going to demonstrate a comically bad compact audio cassette. This is a Tone Master branded tape, originally sold probably sometime in the 1980s or 1990s by the Walgreen drugstore chain here in the United States. And if you're thinking that you can't expect much from a privately labeled tape offered for sale by a drugstore chain, well, not to spoil the video, but you are absolutely right. In fact, the best thing I could possibly say about this tape would have to do with its assembly. The fact that whoever manufactured it for Walgreens actually decided to use screws to hold the casing together so that in the event something were to go wrong with this tape, you could repair it, or more likely you could use the shell to repair a much more worthwhile cassette. This particular tape came in a partially opened package of three. Two tapes were left. The second one was actually unusable due to a molding defect in the bottom portion of the tape where there are openings for the pinch roller and cap stand, the playback and record head, and of course the erase head. And if they can't even get the molding right, well, you wonder what the tape itself is going to sound like. I did a video quite some time ago featuring this exact cassette where I demonstrated a certain aspect of its sound as compared to a much better quality Maxell communicator tape. I didn't play or record anything on those tapes, I simply ran them back and forth in this Technics RSM218 cassette deck, where it was soon revealed that the Maxell tape, despite being a rather basic low-end model for voice recording only, ran smoothly and quietly, where the Tone Master definitely did not. In case you haven't seen that video, you don't remember it, well, you don't have to worry about it because I'm going to repeat the demonstration right now. Now, initially, when you start this tape fast-forwarding or rewinding, it doesn't run too terribly noisily. You usually have to get into the middle of it somewhere before it really starts to shrill. But any cassette tape that's being rewound or fast-forwarded ought to run smoothly and quietly. And this definitely does not. You can hear the little squeaks and chirps of dissatisfaction. Probably because if there are any lubricating sheets separating the tape re reels from the outside world and their casing, they're not of very good quality. The Maxell communicator tape have, has of course gone on at this point. I think it's actually out in my truck right now. So I have a pretty garden variety Sony Type 1 HF series tape. Again, a relatively inexpensive low-end cassette tape. But as you can hear when I start it up, it runs just about silently, as the Tone Master tape certainly should. I got a lot of comments in that video, including one person who mentioned that Tone Master was the only tape they had ever used that printed through on them. Print through, in case you're unfamiliar with the concept, is where a magnetic signal actually travels to and is applied to more than one layer of tape, resulting in a faint artifact of a signal being left behind as the tape rolls around to the point where the signal was supposed to be placed on the first portion of tape, but ended up going through to another portion of tape that shouldn't have received that signal. So this tape is pretty comically bad. We could probably safely leave it at that, but if you know me, you know that I can't leave anything alone. About a month ago, when Weasel 2 HTM was here visiting for our yearly live streaming show, we decided to do a little recording on some cassette tapes just to see what would happen. He brought some Maxell UR series tapes with him that didn't seem to be working very well. I don't know why they weren't working very well, but they weren't. However, they were working brilliantly compared to this. Now, I could have just gone ahead and played the tape for you right now, but I want to make sure that you know you're not being put on or lied to, that I didn't deliberately sabotage this poor tape by recording it on some machine with a gross defect or serious problem. I've gone ahead and set up the recording levels here. I've turned Dolby Noise Reduction on just because I frequently use it. And I've gone ahead and prepared the tape for recording. Let's go ahead and engage the recording mode. Take the pause off of this thing, and I've got a little something queued up in the CD player just as soon as we get past the leader on this tape. We'll have to be careful because I don't want to get caned by the copyright police, but here we go. This is the original sound. Look carefully at those meters indicating the amplitude of the signal I'm placing on the tape. And of course the central air conditioning just kicked on, so we'll be right back 
and I'll play this tape for you to show you what has happened to its signal as it ventured out onto this particular magnetic medium. So profound is the lack of quality from any recording made to this tape that I could have left the air conditioner roaring away in the background while all of you in the viewing audience would have still been amply able to experience for yourself the kind of horrors to which signals recorded to this tape were being subjected. However, I am so dedicated to my viewing audience that I waited for the air conditioner to cycle itself off just so you could have that much more appreciation of the truly nasty things that are going on here. However, my dedication does not run to the point of trying to lash up some sort of a contraption in order to establish a connection between tape deck and camcorder microphone input. As it happens, I don't own an attenuation cable, so I can't really do that, and anything I could come up with runs the risk of injecting hum and all sorts of other nasties into the audio. Help that this recording, to be quite frank about it, absolutely does not need. Let's go ahead and experience it. I want you to notice the level meters, too. Oh dear, that is so truly horrifying that I think it deserves an instant replay in the most analog sense possible. Only way I could have gotten closer was to edit this video on actual tape. The first thing you'll notice is that not nearly as much of the signal as I put out as this tape deck was dispensing through its record head actually made it to the tape. And if you were listening carefully enough, you probably heard the stereo image moving all over the place, even through this camcorder's microphone as a pickup method. Finally, what you may not have noticed is that the bass drum, or kick drum, as it may more properly be called, is being subjected to some very interesting distortion characteristics. It's almost like it's ringing or echoing in some sense. Maybe that's even some print-through behavior on this tape. Like I say, I've never had a tape print-through, although I've certainly heard pre-recorded tapes do it, and they sounded nothing like what this particular tape is doing. Now, there are some of you in the viewing audience who are probably saying at this point, well, it's certainly possible that this tape and this particular deck are not a good match for one another. And I will certainly accept that as plausible. It is my opinion that this Technics RSM218, as with many other Technics tape decks, performs exceptionally well. In fact, I think it outperforms a lot of machines that were sold as much higher-end models. But just to appease those of you in the audience who might be working up to the point of feverishly typing a comment saying that I need to try another tape deck, here's one right now. And it is, in fact, a fancier unit, at least it's advertised as such, as compared to the Technics. This is a Sony RX77ES model, and while I would imagine that this is probably the equivalent of putting a Yugo engine into a Cadillac, we are going to try it anyway. Now, some of you probably hear this thing making a strange noise, and in the interest of full disclosure, I will tell you that it is. It is a blown bearing in this unit's primary drive motor, which, like all decks of moderately to supremely high quality, runs all the time so as to avoid any possible speed fluctuations as the motor swings into gear. The motor still runs perfectly well, but it does need attention, so I don't use this deck very often. However, we will go ahead right now and record the same program at approximately the same levels using the same noise reduction method, Dolby BNR, to this particular tape, and we will see what exactly happens on its way through the recording head. I have to wait for the leader to get past here. Most of the time that's about five seconds, and here we go. Let's go ahead and wind that back and see what we got. Here's the part where I'll openly admit that um, sometimes I don't necessarily know how to work my own creations. 
there's a lot of stuff going on in this particular stereo system, a lot of sources to choose from. So I may have to do a little bit of experimentation here just to figure out where I've got this tape deck patched into the system at. Hey, I got it right. So now that I've done that, honest to goodness, no retouching, no editing. Let's listen to the thing. Even though the air conditioner did just kick on, we'll just turn it up to 11 to compensate. Oh, dearie me, that is pretty awful. I think the Technics actually did manage to get a little bit more out of this particular travesty of a cassette tape than the Sony did, but it's so bad that it's really, really hard to tell. <laughs> it's just absolutely awful. And now, just to give you an idea of what the recording should sound and behave like, We'll take this Sony HF tape from earlier. This is a new old stock tape. The case is around here somewhere. I've only used it once before this, and it was only as a cross comparison to these tapes, which were being troublesome, and this one, which was just plain garbage. We'll make a recording to it, and we'll see what kind of a result we get right after the air conditioning cycles off yet again. And now, what it should sound like. Back to the original. Do I really need to say more? In fact, I really think at this point, there's only one thing that Tone Master tape is good for. I expect that this particular video stunt is going to end very poorly. Not to mention that I'm right underneath the kitchen in the laundry room. Nobody understands the great art of being quiet while I'm making a video, especially when they don't know that I'm doing it. And of course there is a thunderstorm on right now, so with any luck we'll probably pick up a few peals of thunder, though that's easily fixed in post-production. What's not so easily fixed is a power outage. No matter how much lightning we do, inside the video editor. Darkness is still darkness. Nothing times nothing is nothing. Speaking of nothing, here goes nothing. I put a little spin on this sucker. And now you know, folks, why I never was a star basketball player. I'm bound to get it sooner or later. Aced it.